This video is brought to you by Play Asia. Check out the link below and then use the code censored for three dollars off every order. Hey guys and welcome to today's CG News Flash where we'll be going through some of the news that's been going on lately in a single video. Whilst of course normally the channel tries to cover things individually, there's been quite a few things going on and also you've probably noticed that I've been away for a while now and have got some catching up to do. So firstly I'd just like to apologise for my sudden absence. This was due to a number of circumstances and it's very rare that something like this happens so expect many more videos on the way soon. But to get straight into things, first up one of the big topics going on lately relates to the Sony content policy changes introduced last year, and how this has affected the release of the dungeon crawling RPG Amiga Labyrinth Life. You may recall how the channel discussed how the game will be released in two versions. The Switch version will be fully uncut, whilst the PlayStation 4 version will be removing a large amount of fan service elements and has even been released under a new name. So whilst on Switch the game is called Amiga Labyrinth Life, which ties in with previous games in the series, which are all dubbed Amiga Labyrinth, the Sony version will be simply called Labyrinth Life. The game isn't planned to be released over in the west, but we now have some big news that both versions will be receiving a release in the Southeast Asian region, complete with full English language options. This is of course something we see quite a bit for games released in the Asia territory, and as always, the folks that play Asia have you covered if you want to pick up an English copy of the game. You'll be able to find a link in the description if you want to go check it out. There's also been a curious trailer release for the game recently that shows 6 minutes of action from the Switch release, and then cuts to an interesting segment at the end that seemingly pokes fun at being made to tone the game down on PS4. Right at the end, the PS4 version is finally mentioned, and the narrators describe this version as a family-friendly version that will offer a wholesome experience for the whole family, complete with random stock images that are supposed to depict how everybody will be able to get together and play the game. So yeah, it definitely seems that the devs have a sense of humour about the situation at hand. Next up, we have a few stories regarding game released in Germany. Firstly, Bethesda has revealed via their official websites that the German version of Wolfenstein Youngblood will be having changes made to make it to quote, fully sanitised. So from this it seems that the types of changes to iconography that have been made to previous games will be making a return for the German version. This would usually be a standard practice for German releases, however this news is actually pretty noteworthy due to the mass attention that the changes made to Wolfenstein 2 received and the then subsequent policy changes for games released in the country. Following the attention it was announced by the German rating organisation, the USK, that they will now judge games on a case by case basis for whether the social adequacy clause applies, which allows this iconography in things like movies due to artistic purposes. Previously the USK would automatically refuse to rate any game containing the iconography, but now the USK has already allowed several games to be released that they previously would not have. And so the fact that Bethesda isn't trying to get the game released uncut is somewhat surprising, but this is something that the company hasn't spoken more about and the full details are currently unclear. Alongside this, another title that has had some history of issues in the country is Galgun 2, the fan service rogue gun shooter from Inti Create. Galgun 2 was never released in Germany, but it's now, more than a year later, been found to be suitable for a release and is finally available to buy in the region, which is definitely good news for fans of the game. Next we have an update on the World Health Organization officially listing gaming disorder as a disease in their widely used international classification of diseases. This is something that has been in the works for a while now and is something that the channel has given updates on new times. It has now however been fully approved and gaming disorder, which is described as a pattern of persistent or recurrent gaming behaviour, will be added to the new classification of diseases when the 11th revision becomes the new standard in 2022. This news hasn't come without its controversy, with some critics arguing that excessive gaming is no different from people choosing to spend their time excessively on other things, and that there's nothing inherent about gaming that should warrant it being singled out. It is also argued that it could possibly influence more restrictions being put on the industry. And then finally we have some news from over in China that was originally reported by the website Abacus News. South Korea's Chairman of Foreign Affairs and Unification Committee has officially requested that China remove the now two-year ban on all Korean games in the country. This ban was originally implemented over something
something very not video game related, as it was due to political tension over Korea choosing to deploy a US anti-ballistic missile system called FAD. This saw China implement various sanctions on Korea, including the ban of all Korean companies releasing video games in China. Korean games have historically been very popular in the region as well, with a notable example being many popular Korean MMOs. The Korean missile controversy may have died down somewhat, but in response to the matter, a Chinese ambassador would only say that China values its relationship with South Korea. And so this unfortunately doesn't indicate whether changes will be made anytime soon, and whether Korean companies will be once more allowed to release games in the country. As always, please let us know your thoughts about these stories in the comments below, and consider subscribing to see more videos on how media is changed around the world. Until next time, thank you for watching.